The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at Dell Technologies World 2024. It's great to be back. We're celebrating Dell's 40th anniversary. And 10 years ago, I was on the Dell World TV stage here. So it's kind of like a anniversary for me and also for the 6.5. You know, this event has been incredible. I mean, it's all about AI, obviously, and AI infrastructure, AI PCs, AI software, and AI services. Uh, we've had some incredible folks that we saw on stage. Uh, Bill McDermott from ServiceNow. Uh, Jensen also joined uh, Michael Dell on stage. And I gotta tell you, it's like, I think those three guys actually like to be around each other. It was pretty cool. So. What I've said a lot on the 6.5 and even my research is that the grand purifier between uh, technology vendors and technology analysts are the customers themselves. And the great news is that our next guest is actually both. Jen Felch uh, uh, runs, uh, she's the chief digital officer and CIO for Dell. And obviously, she's carrying both those hats. Jen, welcome to the show. Gosh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so it's been a couple years since we've talked kind of one-on-one. Oh, yeah, with like 10,000 people <laughs> out there. Right. Uh, but can you give us an update on your role as Chief Di Digital Officer and CIO? What does that mean? Um, first of all, it's an honor to actually to have this role. Um, and when we think about it, we've, we're, our organization is kind of in three big areas today. One is the operation, the design, and the operation of Dell.com, right? Dell.com today is probably one of the top five e-commerce sites in the world. Right. So a significant operation that we, uh, that we run for the company. We have what we might think of as our traditional IT role, operating all of the systems and processes, uh, supporting every function. And then um, an area that I like to, to think about in this way is actually core platforms, whether that is our data platform, it is right. our private cloud, or it's our AI platform, which we're talking about quite a bit these days. That's what, that's what it needs to be in the Dell Digital organization, is trying to do those things all at the same time. I, I can't imagine what you're going through now. I mean. Um, I started my career in 1990 and we were kind of moving from mini computers to Unix servers, uh, you know, from 3270 controllers to PCs, uh, and then we moved into this, this internet thing, yeah. right, that was, it changed everything, and then e-commerce, and then social local mobile changed so many things, and here we are in this generative AI uh, age here. And, and I'm curious, how are you uh, approaching this gen AI opportunity inside uh, of Dell? You know, on one hand, you have this massive expense of, of what you need to actually get done. And then you have this big cultural shift as well in processes and how people get their jobs done. Yeah, so let me, let's break it I down. I just asked yeah. like 10 questions. Yeah, 10 there. questions. So. Um, <laughs> So let's start with we know that we're on the beginning of a at the beginning of a major architectural shift in our workloads and in our infrastructure kind of uh, the full stack. We just don't know we just don't know exactly where it's headed. So what we've been doing is saying let's really focus on architectural components, have clear boundaries, leverage open source where we can and modularize the elements of it. We right. call that our, our AI platform, our AI acceleration platform. Um, and I think it's really important because it allows us to let different elements progress at different rates yes. and it gives us some flexibility. So that is really important from the technology side. Then we have the, uh, everybody in the world wants to adopt AI and it's so easy, it's accessible to people that may not have thought of themselves as technologists before, like they're now all about Gen AI, yes. right? They've tried it at home, they want to right. do it at work. I saw um, it on the app, it worked yeah. like once. I could get recipes and uh, help me on my trip to Spain, so it must be bulletproof and ready for right. enterprise, right? right. Um, so we're trying not to like crush that. Yeah. By the way, this is how PCs started too. Yeah. Right. right. And almost right. everything that 
you know, started on the outskirts of IT and then it was like, oh my gosh, we need to get this under control. So we've said, um, we're trying to find that balance yeah. of, you know, some things we really have to control pretty tightly because it might be around our core IP. Other things right. we want to let people experiment. Um, but with Jeff Boudreau, we did this survey. Jeff Boudreau and John Rose, we had like 900 different ideas of how we could be using Gen AI. Right. So we went through and we actually used Dell Consulting Services to say, okay, let's categorize these things. Right. Um, what has, you know, where do we see there's a big value, like important things to solve? Where do we think that AI technology is applicable, like right. high probability of success? And then the last one, where do we think the data is actually ready? Yes. And that is how we narrowed down to about, probably about 50 use cases that we thought these, this is where we should focus now. And we'll keep the rest because we never know how they'll evolve. And I think that was really important because you had to focus and get some traction, which comes back to the culture to say, okay, we want to let people innovate, but we also need to move enough people to the most important use cases right. that we solve them. So that's kind of fun. I mean, we pulled people from across the company to work on the most important use cases, uh, which really is awesome to see the cross-functional collaboration uh, come back that's very startup-like, you know? Yeah. So it's fun at a big company to see that spirit come back from the, uh, the organization. Well, and what I really appreciate too, because we've seen this, if you just put, if you clamp down on everything immediately, it's gonna happen outside of your control anyways. And we saw this with smartphones, we saw this with yeah. early PCs, uh, uh, cloud data storage, right? Everywhere. It's like right. having that balance, I, I think that's a very mature way uh, to do things. Um, so what were some of the top uh, challenges that, that you've encountered in your Gen AI journey that you can share with other enterprises that hopefully they can get some inspiration from you, maybe learn from you? Um, I mean, I would say some of the challenges, probably the biggest challenge is, um, you know, someone said it's pretty easy to get a good model, good results. <laughs> takes a lot of effort to get great results. So yes. just keeping that in mind to say, figure out where you can get, where you can you know, try something and see how good it is right. and whether or not you're gonna invest further to make it great. Um, but it all comes back to really looking at your data. Is yeah. your data set up so that, you know, uh, uh, is your data set up so that it is actually going to train the model that you want to use? And when you look at your data, it comes back to the same things that IT people have been talking about before, which is your process generates data, your process should be clean to generate good data, right. and that good data will enable you to create, to create those great models uh, for AI. So that's a big lesson learned. Where we have nice, clean, structured data, yes. this is fantastic. Yeah. Where we don't, or people are training on unstructured data, like, well, here's just a pile of proposals. <laughs> they come back and say, like, you know what, maybe we should go with the ones that were successful. Maybe we should just train on the good proposals right. or the good data. So that's probably the biggest lesson learned is just trying to um, curate the data that you want to use to train what your AI is going to do for the future. Right. And you know, it's interesting, early on, I mean, we learned in the 80s, even my 80s classes, garbage in, garbage out, yeah, right? And same. it seems to be amplified with, with generative AI, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, it's, it's one thing that if you're trying to get an answer, let's say, out of your ERP system, it's one thing. But if you're trying to get a result that combines data from your ERP to your PLM, uh, to your CRM, to your CRM. I mean, it's like it isn't. It, it's it's a whole lot of data mistakes you can make, or oh, yeah. if you don't get that right, like what comes out is not going to be what you thought you were going to get out. So, uh, so that kind of comes back to the very first question. These are the two things that come together: your um, your data. And we're talking more about horizontal data than vertical data. Yes. That's where the real value is, is this horizontal solutions or applying AI to horizontal solutions. Right. And then, who are the experts in your company that can assess 
that the horizontal, the solution is correct. Like, does that seem like the right solution or not? Right. And then you're going back and assessing your model, you're assessing your data. So, um, so it's a kind of an interesting mix of, of the technology and your, your process and data, and then the expertise that you have to really validate the models. Yes. How do you, how do you scale? Like, you don't know exactly what you're going to need before you need it. And if you change something in the mix, like change a model that you use, make it bigger, make it smaller, realize you have to use three models. How do you scale for that to get what you want to do? Is this, dare I say, part of it in the public cloud and part of it is on the edge and, and in your own data centers? Yeah, it is. Okay. I mean, so it kind of, it kind of comes back to that, that premise of saying, okay, we really need to focus on the architecture. Uh, do we have, we call them data products in a catalog. Um, structuring your embedding so that you can actually reuse them so that people can test okay. against different models. It, so that's kind of what I mean when I say really think about the architecture. You may choose to run things in a variety of different places, but you know you're going to be experimenting. Right. And you know that this industry is evolving very, very quickly. So you kind of don't want to just keep redoing the same stuff, right? Right. So with everybody learning, and it seems like things change every 90 days, at least from my point of view. Uh, you're building the train as you're, you're running on it, but how do you train people? How do you skill people to, to operate uh, in, in, in this environment? You, you, by the way, this was yeah. a conversation I think you and I may have had years ago, yeah. and here we are having the same conversation, but it seems like it's going to be amplified because it literally seems to change every 90 days. Well, you never stop. Like, so, you know, as you're driving productivity improvements, you have to kind of turn that around and, and reinvest in your, in your team, like continuing to invest in them, not only in training, but actually to let them get hands on and explore because, because things are moving so quickly. I think the best way for people to learn is actually hands on and try it. Yeah. So you got to, you know, uh, I'm an experiential learner myself, so I guess I highly Me encourage too. that, whether it's hackathons or being on different teams. I think that's what everybody wants to wants to do, but I think that's the only way to keep up is you got to be delivering results and then continue learning. And what's not very typical is you might actually have to redo what you did six months ago because there's right. better technology available or a different approach. And that's going to be okay if you've got a good architecture behind you. And I think that just reiterates why having the right architecture in place that you can pull modules in and out right. and even deploy them uh, wherever you might need to. And whether that's um, in a private cloud, whether that's even in a public cloud on the, on the edge to have that flexibility to be able uh, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great how, it's funny, in some, in some uh, rela relations, the old, what's old is new. Because a lot of the things that I learned, even back in the 80s, it's like we're having very similar conversations here, uh, but they are different, they are more complex, and the rate of change is, is going up. So Jen, thank you so much for spending time yeah, thanks uh, with for, me. Thanks for having me, I really appreciate you it. You know, and bringing your words of wisdom, I mean, it's literally, everybody I've talked to at the event from Dell, when they talk about drinking our own champagne, it's like, uh, you set out the glasses and made a lot of this champagne, uh, to get to get Dell into the position to do that. So congratulations and just uh, your approach is working. Well, we have, I mean, we have a great company. We have great products, we have great services. Yeah. And so uh, I'd love to see it all come together. Yeah, I'd love to have you on the show again in the Thank future you. to talk about, you know, percentage increase, percentage improvements over oh. here and over here. I am just fascinated uh, about that, to hear it from your customers and you. Let's from do Internal it. Data Let's to. do it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks this so. is Pat Moorhead with Jen Felch from Dell Technologies. Thank you for tuning in to all of our coverage for Dell Tech World 2024 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out all of the content from Dell Tech World on there. We appreciate you tuning in. Take care.